Hey guys, what's up? So I welcome you to this amazing course on environment and ecology in 2014. That is about three and a half years ago. I took a course on environment and ecology, and it changed the way that people perceived environment and ecology. Until then, millions of students have watched it since then. And in this course, I will cover all the important concepts of environment and ecology, and uh, we will discuss it through thousand MCQs. And it will be for government exams like UPSC, CSC, and it is the ultimate course for that. So all the important concepts of an ENE for UPSC, CSC will be explained in detailed way. And uh, the objective of this course is that you will be able to qualify prelims, and there is no crap about it. Just basic questions which are required for UPSC, CSC exam. And it will also develop. It will help you to develop the right strategy, so that you can understand how the mind of an examiner works. when it comes to formulating questions for upsc csc from environment and ecology section because you will be able to solve 1000 mcqs so rest assured you will be able to uh, get a lot of marks in that so you will be able to solve 10 mcqs per lesson and uh, i'll also provide detailed explanation along with the mcqs and the target audience is upsc civil service aspirants by far aspirants giving other upsc exam like capf cms cds and other government exams like ssc cgl etc so what are you waiting for get started thank you hey guys what's up so let us start our awesome course on environment and ecology these are question number 1 to 10 and we will discuss rest 990 questions in the subsequent lessons consider the following levels of organization and ecology and select the options which represent the decreasing order of the levels according to their size so first of all you have the biosphere which is the biggest one then you have biome then you have ecosystem then you have community then you have population and finally you have individual so answer is c uh, so individuals is an organism population is a group of organism community is association of population of two or more species ecosystem is complex interaction between community of living beings and the physical environment biome is a very large geographical area of distinctive plants and animals groups which are adapted to the particular environment and finally biosphere is the part of the earth's crust that supports life so please remember this order it is very very important question number 2 autotrophs are the organism that derive nutrition from decaying organic matter that is saprotrophs okay so first is wrong heterotrophs are organism that cannot manufacture its own food and derives its intake of nutrition uh, from mainly plants or animal matter that is correct saprotroph uh, are the organism that derive from decaying or, uh, food and autotrophs are that can produce their own food so answer is b that is two only So autotrophs are organism that can produce their own food, and heterotrophs cannot manufacture its own food and derives its intake of nutrition from plant or animal matter. And saprotrophs are organism that derive nutrition from decaying organic matter. Question number three: Which of the following are the abiotic components? Abiotic means dead. So soil is dead, water is dead, air is dead, humus is dead, but plants is not dead. So since fourth uh, is wrong, the only option that can be correct is A or D. So answer here is D. so abiotic components are non living chemical and physical parts of the environment that affect the living organisms and the functioning of ecosystem plants are living so they are not abiotic and humus is dark organic material uh, which is non living and hence it is abiotic question number 4 which of the following statements given below is correct ecozones are characterized by the evolutionary history of organisms they contain that is correct biomes are not defined by historical or taxonomical similarity that is also correct so answer is c both one and two So ecozones are a method of dividing up the earth surface and each ecozone is a large area that contains a number of habitats which are linked by the evolutionary history of the animals and as such ecozone designations are used to indicate general groupings of organisms based on their shared biogeography and unlike ecozones biomes are not defined by genetic taxonomic or historical similarities and biomes are often identified with particular patterns of ecological succession and climate vegetation Question number five: An ecosystem is often much larger than a biome. That is wrong. Biome is much larger than ecosystem. A biome is made up of many similar ecosystems. That is correct. So answer is B to only. Okay. So bio ecosystem is much smaller than a biome. Question number six: The structural and functional unit of a biosphere is. So answer here is ecosystem. So uh, just remember question number one and half of your doubts will be solved. So ecosystem is the structural and functional unit of biosphere. consisting of community of living beings and the abiotic component that is the physical environment question number 7 ecotone is a unique functional role or place of a species in an ecosystem that is wrong that is niche niche is a zone of junction between two or more diverse ecosystem that is ecotone so they have reversed one and two here 
ecozones are a method of dividing up the earth surface based on the evolutionary history of the animals and plants within them so that is correct so answer here is uh, b that is three only so niche is a unique functional role or a place of a species in an ecosystem and ecotone is a zone of junction between two or more diverse ecosystem uh, question number eight it extends uh, over central and southern Europe. It consists of widely spaced trees. It is generally the most productive agricultural areas of earth. Okay, but a statement bol diya. It has abundant rainfall. It cannot be tundra, it cannot be taiga. And uh, so answer here is B, that is temperate deciduous forests. So tundra is the northernmost region adjoining poles, hence incorrect. Taiga is found in northern Europe, Asia and North America. Hence option B is the answer which fits all the bill. Question number 9, which of the following statement is correct? Lentic ecosystem has flowing waters like creeks, streams and rivers. This is wrong. Lentic has stagnant water. Lotic se yaad rakhna, lotta hai, lotta hai. So, lotna means like here and there. So, lotic has flowing waters like creeks, streams and rivers. Lentic has stagnant water like lakes and ponds. So, first and second both are wrong. So, answer is C3 only. Benthic zone is the lowest level of a body of water such as an ocean or a lake. So, answer here is C3. Okay. So they have reversed the lentic and lotic definitions. And last question for the day, which of the following statements about biosphere is true? It is absent at the extremes of North and South Pole. Uh, that is correct. The energy required for life within the biosphere comes from the sun. So that is also correct. Living organisms are uniformly distributed. That is wrong. The answer here is A, 1 and 2. So biosphere is basically that part of earth where life can exist and biosphere is absent at regions where extreme hostile conditions do not support life hence it is absent at extremes of both north and south poles and obviously living organisms are not uniformly distributed they are concentrated in tropics and they decrease as we go on either direction so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 11 to 20 in our course on environment and ecology and we will discuss thousand mcqs and it will cover all the important topics question number 11 which of the following statements about ecological pyramid is correct food producer forms the tip of the pyramid so that is wrong food producer forms the base of the pyramid the top carnivore forms the tip of the pyramid that is correct other consumer traffic levels are in between so that is also correct so answer here is d Okay, so first statement is wrong. Answer is D, 2 and 3. So in an ecological pyramid, food producer forms the base, top carnivore forms the tip and other consumer tr trophic levels are in between. Uh, question number 12, which of the following are correctly matched? Grassland ecosystem is an upright pyramid of numbers. That is correct. Pond ecosystem, inverted pyramid of numbers. Uh, that is wrong. Rather, parasitic ecosystem, inverted pyramid of numbers. That is correct. So answer here is uh, D, 1 and 3 only. So, pond ecosystem is an example of upright pyramid of numbers, whereas many aquatic ecosystems are examples of inverted pyramid of biomass. Uh, question number 13, the following statements are a characteristic of, it is used in order to overcome the shortcomings of pyramid of numbers. Individuals in each trophic level are weighted instead of being counted. Since they are talking about weight, so answer has to be pyramid of biomass and it is determined by measuring the dry weight of all organisms occupying such trophic level. So, answer here is B, pyramid of biomass. So, pyramid of productivity is also known as pyramid of energy, but dry weight is measured only while representing pyramid of biomass. Question number 14, which type of ecological pyramid is always upright? Answer here is pyramid of energy because of 10% law of, uh, okay, so that energy will always reduce from one trophic level to another. So, an energy pyramid reflects the conversion of solar energy to chemical energy at each trophic level and with loss of energy being depicted at each transfer to another trophic level. Hence, the pyramid is always upward with a large energy base at the bottom. Question number 15. Accumulation of non-biodegradable pesticides in food chain in increasing amount at each higher trophic level is known as. So, this is statement, it is called as biomagnification. This especially affects the birds, egg shells, especially of uh, eagle, etc. And they become very brittle because of DDT biomagnification. So, biomagnification is a tendency of the pollutants to concentrate as they move from one trophic level to the next. Thus, there is an increase in the concentration of a pollutant from lower level to higher trophic level. Question number 16. In order for biomagnification to occur, pollutant must be. So, it has to be long lived. So, that is correct. Immobile. Uh, that is not needed. Soluble in fat, biologically active. That is has to be there. Answer is D134. So, in order for, uh, it has to be mobile, not immobile. Okay. Question number 17, an inverted pyramid of biomass can be found in, in, in which ecosystem? 
an inverted pyramid of biomass is in marine ecosystem let's say because blue whales etc are huge and planktons do not weigh much so answer there is a marine ecosystem so the pyramid of biomass assumes an inverted form in marine ecosystem because there are tiny phytoplanktons that grow and reproduce rapidly as the base of the pyramid is small and the biomass of consumer at any instant exceeds uh, the biomass of producer these are important concepts question number 18 bioaccumulation refers to so it refers to how pollutants enter a food chain so answer here is a so bioaccumulation refers to the build up of pollutants in the body of one organism while biomagnification refers to the build up in multiple organisms in bioaccumulation there is an increase in the concentration of a pollutant from the environment to the first organism in a food chain and biomagnification also require movement up a food chain in order to occur while bioaccumulation does not require that the animal be eaten at all Question number 19 what is the type of biotic interaction where one species is harmed and the other is unaffected it is called as amencellism and it especially happens in some plants which secrete certain chemicals which is called as allelo okay so allelopathy is the term which is used there so amencellism is a type of biotic interaction wherein one species is harmed the other is unaffected and a small plant growing in the shade of a large tree is an example of amencellism here the last trees are affected where the small plants get negatively affected but it cannot because it cannot receive sufficient sunlight and last question for today is commensalism in association between two species where basically one species is unaffected but the other species benefits so answer here is a it is exactly opposite of amensalism so commensalism is a type of biotic interaction where one species benefits the other is unaffected For example, cow dung provides food and shelter to dung beetles, but the beetles have no effects on cows whatsoever. So, thank you for watching this lesson. Hey guys, what's up? So, let us discuss question number twenty-one to thirty in environment and ecology. Question number twenty-one: the symbiotic relationship between fungus and plant called mycorrhiza it helps in. So, basically, mycorrhiza. and fun like mycorrhiza is fungus and plant basically and uh, helps in absorption of water absorption of nutrients but not gaseous exchange so answer here is a one and two so myco here means fungus rhiza means roots and they form a network of fine filaments that associate with plant roots and draw nutrients and water from the soil that the root system would not be able to access otherwise question number twenty two the process of decomposition is fastest in so wherever there is high temperature wherever there is more moisture and wherever there is more air oxygen so it will be there so answer here is a tropical rainforest so requirement for efficient decomposition includes aeration oxygen moisture temperature 10 to 45 degrees celsius and uh, in alpine or antarctic region they have very low temperature and it does not support decomposition which of the following statements about ddt is correct it is an antibiotic this is wrong it is an antiseptic this is wrong It is a non-degradable pollutant. That is correct. So it is dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane. So answer here is B three only. So it is a synthetic insecticide. People used to kill it. Uh, mosquitoes also. It is need. It is known to be very persistent in the environment, and it will accumulate in fatty tissue and can travel long distance in the upper atmosphere as well. It can go in birds through biomagnification. It can make their shells brittle, egg shells brittle. Which of these relate to the tundra biome? permafrost spongy swamps rhododendrons so answer here is d 1 2 3 so permafrost is the permanently frozen subsoil portion in the tundra region and when the upper ice cover melts during the summer the subsoil still remains frozen it is permanently frozen 12 months a day 12 months a year every day and it result in spongy swamps in the grass tundra consists of mosses lichens sedges rhododendrons etc Question number twenty-five. Study by the Terry, that is the Energy and Resource Institute, has found high levels of ozone in Delhi, which, which shows that there is high level of pollutants like nitrogen oxide, which interact with hydrocarbons in presence of sunlight to produce ozone. So answer here is C. So <clears throat> a study by Terry has found high levels of ozone in Delhi, and it is because of the nitrogen oxide interacting with hydrocarbons in the presence of sunlight to produce ozone. Question number twenty-six. Tight eye disease is related to. So many people think it is mercury poisoning. That is wrong. That is mina mata disease. Tight eye disease is because of cadmium poisoning. Lead poisoning is called as plumbism. 
so a tight tight disease was the first documented occurrence of mass cadmium poisoning in the world and it literally translates to ouch ouch because of the painful screams of its victims and mena mater disease is a neurological syndrome caused by severe mercury poisoning question number 27 there are some organic compounds found to be highly toxic to humans and are banned these are called as persistent organic pollutants it means it means they are readily absorbed by plants and reach man through food chain that is correct being fat soluble their concentration increases many fold through the food web that is correct being water soluble no they are not water soluble otherwise they will be passed in urine and these compounds cannot be broken down by plants or animals so that is also correct so answer is d124 so they have low solubility in water but easily captured by solid particles and are soluble in organic fluids like oils fats and liquid fuels question number 28 imagine you are in a region where evaporation exceeds precipitation and mean annual rainfall is below 100 mm the region is a so it is a typical desert answer here is c so deserts are regions where more water evaporates from the ground than is replaced by precipitation and they are generally extremely hot question number 29 which among the following is a tertiary consumer so primary consumer are called as herbivores and uh, so deer uh, wild boar they can't be there so answer here is the only one who fits the bill is tiger and uh, tigers can eat secondary consumers like uh, wild boar etc wild boar can eat uh, small herbivores and herbivores will eat your plants so answer here is a so primary consumer eat the producers they are called as herbivores secondary consumers are carnivores they are called as meat eaters because they eat the primary consumers and finally at the top of the food chain you have tertiary consumers they are also called as top predators and they will eat the primary and secondary consumer okay and last question is which of the following organism can act as primary consumer secondary consumer tertiary consumer or scavenger in different types of food chains answer here is a raven so raven can be a primary secondary tertiary consumer it consumes fruits and seeds directly from plants it eats other primary consumers like rats it also eats from the carcass of secondary consumers hence it is also a tertiary consumer or a scavenger so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so this is question number 31 to 14 environment and ecology so let's get started with this consider the following statements about ecological succession it is a directional change in vegetation that is correct it occurs on an ecological time scale that is also correct Succession occurs when large-scale destruction of communities caused by natural reasons. That is correct. Succession does not occur when large-scale destruction is caused by man-made reason. That is not correct. So answer here is uh, C123. So it can be because of the natural reasons or man-made. It can be either natural or man-made. Uh, question number 32. During ecological succession, the first organism to colonize an area, they are called as. So basically, they are called as the pioneers. Pioneers are the people who come for the first time. For example, lichens, etc., and it is made up of all the living organisms, usually just a few species or even just one species that occupy an area undergoing primary succession in the beginning stages. Question number 33 in a terrestrial ecosystem, hardwood trees are an example of. So they are basically example of climax community. Basically, they are the last one, and unless there is some drastic change, they are not going to be replaced. So hardwood trees are the final stage of succession. They are called as climax community. Shrub softwood trees are considered successional stages which will eventually lead to replacement by hardwood trees over time. Question number 34. Climax community is in a state of. So they are in a state of basically equilibrium with the environment and succession will reach here a climax where they live in harmony with each other and it produces a stable community dominated by a small number of prominent species and this state of equilibrium is called as the climax community. Question number 35. Consider the following statements about ecological succession. Primary succession occurs in area where a community that previously existed has been removed. Uh, that is wrong. Secondary succession occurs in a century lifeless area. So that is also wrong. So answer is D neither one nor two. They basically flipped it. So primary succession occurs in a century lifeless area. There was no life whatsoever. So for example, regions in which the soil is incapable of sustaining life. As a result of like such factors like lava flow, newly formed sand dunes. While secondary succession occurs in an area where a community that previously existed has been removed. Okay. So answer here is D neither one nor two. Consider the following statements about secondary succession. 
it occurs after complete or partial destruction of the existing community that is correct it is relatively slower as compared to primary succession that is wrong so answer here is a one only secondary succession will be faster as compared to primary succession because primary succession may need hundreds of years but secondary succession can happen in a few year or even some decades question number 37 when succession is brought about by living inhabitants of that community itself the process is called as so that process is called as auto auto means self genic means like you generated something so autogenic succession is when the succession is brought about by the living inhabitants of that community itself while change brought about by outside forces that is called as allogenic so autogenic means self allogenic means others and succession in which initially the green plants are much greater in quantity that is called as autotrophic succession and the ones in which heterotrophs dominate that is called as heterotrophic succession which of the following statement is correct enzymes responsible for nitrogenase action are very susceptible to destruction by oxygen for this reason many bacteria cease the production of enzyme in presence of oxygen nitrogen can be fixed by lightning converting nitrogen and oxygen into nox if there is oxygen in the air so statement is both are absolutely correct first is an example of biological nitrogen fixation and it occurs when atmospheric nitrogen is converted to ammonia by an enzyme called as nitrogenase while statement 2 is an example of non biological nature wherein if there is lightning it leads to the fixing of nitrogen oxides which of the following processes are steps involved in water cycle operating in nature evaporation transpiration precipitation so answer here is c 1 2 3 photosynthesis is a not a process which is involved in water cycle operation just remember that so it includes evaporation and condensation precipitation and transpiration and last question is azoto vector atmospheric nitrogen into ammonium nitrosomonas nitro vector so answer here is uh, d123 so all three organisms are correctly matched so azoto vector basically converts atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia nitrosomonas converts ammonia into nitrite and nitro vector converts nitrite into nitrate so answer is d123 and they are very very important part of nitrogen cycle so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 41 to 50 and this is environment and ecology mcqs question number 1 uh, 41 which of the following is an abiotic component of an ecosystem a means non biotic means living primary producer decomposer carnivorous all are living but sunlight is not living so all of them are living except sunlight question number 42 consider the following organisms earthworm carrion beetle pseudomonas slime molds which of the following are detritivorous so detritivorous is basically who eats on breakdown dead or decaying organism so earthworm is definitely there even carrion beetle is there but pseudomonas these are bacteria okay so they are like they are they will not be counted in detritivorous so answer here is a1 and 2 so decomposers are organisms that break down or decaying organisms it is a general term while detritivorous are one of the classification and they break down the dead organisms through the decomposition but detritivorous consume the decaying organisms okay and uh, earthworms and carrion beetle are detritivorous it means they consume the decaying organisms but decomposers merely break down them while pseudomonas and slime molds are decomposers okay they do not consume them a community in ecology is defined as so basically first you have individual then you have species then you have population population and species are same then if you have more populations then it is called as community so an assemblage or association of population of two or more different species occupying the same geographical area and in a particular time so that is called as uh, a community so an assemblage or association of population a is basically organism b refers to population and d refers to an ecosystem so you should know these terms properly question 44 in a terrestrial ecosystem the trophic level that would contain the largest biomass would be the so answer here is producers so producers will have the largest biomass okay so energy from the sun is transferred through the ecosystem by passing through various trophic levels and roughly 10% of the energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next so that is also very important and there must be higher amount of biomass at the bottom of the pyramid to support the energy and biomass requirements at the higher trophic levels and the bottom of the pyramid represents the producers or autotrophs the use of living organisms to remove or neutralize pollutants from a contaminated site is known as that is called as bioremediation so use of living organisms is phytoremediation is basically use of living green plants or in situ or in place removal degradation Uh, containment of soils in sludges sediments surface water ground water etc so that is the bioremediation 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी सिक्स द स्टेट वेयर अ बॉडी ऑफ वाटर रिक्वायर्स हाई कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ न्यूट्रिएंट्स स्पेशली फॉस्फेट्स एंड नाइट्रेट्स इज कॉल्ड एज सो दैट इज बेसिकली यूट्रोफिकेशन इट हैपन्स विद लेक्स एंड पॉन्ड्स सो इट इज कॉज बाई लीचिंग ऑफ फॉस्फेट एंड नाइट्रेट कंटेनिंग फर्टिलाइजर्स फ्रॉम एग्रीकल्चरल लैंड एंड टू लेक्स एंड वाटर एंड द थर्मल स्ट्रेटिफिकेशन ऑफ लेक रेफर्स टू अ चेंज इन द टेम्परेचर एट डिफरेंट डेप्थ इन द लेक एंड इज ड्यू टू द चेंज इन वाटर डेंसिटी विद टेम्परेचर एंड थर्मोक्लाइन इज अ थिन बट डिस्टेंट लेयर इन अ लार्ज बॉडी ऑफ फ्लूड इन विच टेम्परेचर चेंजेस मोर रेपिडली विद डेथ देन इट डज इन द लेयर सब ओवर बिलो एंड द एप्लिमियन और सर्फेस लेक इज द टॉप मोस्ट लेयर इन अ थर्मली स्ट्रेटिफाइड लेक अकरिंग अब द डीपर हाइपोलिमियन क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी सेवन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ यू ट्रॉफिकेशन यू हैव डिक्रीज बायोडाइवर्सिटी यू हैव न्यू स्पीसीज इन विजन यू हैव इंक्रीज इन टॉक्सिसिटी ऑल ऑफ दीज आर इफेक्ट्स सो यू ट्रॉफिकेशन इवेंचुअली रिजल्ट इन डिक्रीज बायोडाइवर्सिटी बिकॉज एल्गल ब्रूम विल रिस्ट्रिक्ट द सनलाइट पेनिट्रेशन एंड इट विल कॉज डेथ ऑफ द प्लांट्स इट विल लीड टू डेथ ऑफ ऑल द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स एंड इट कैन शिफ्ट द स्पीसीज कम्पोजिशन ऑफ द इको सिस्टम एंड सम रिलीज न्यूरो एंटीपेटोटॉक्सेंस वैन डेड और रिटर्न दे कैन किल एक्वेटिक ऑर्गेनिजम्स वट विल हैपन इफ द वल्फ इज रिमूव फ्रॉम द फूड चेन गिवन बिलो सो बेसिकली द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ डियर विल इंक्रीज ऑब्वियसली सो वल्फ इज अ प्रिडेटर विच फीड्स ऑन डियर वैन द प्रिडेटर इज प्रेजेंट द डियर पॉपुलेशन इज कंट्रोल्ड इफ यू रिमूव दैम Uh, they will uh, turn increase and they will might decrease the population of vegetation which of the following are examples of marine mammals polar bear yes to a certain extent you can say dolphins whales walrus so definitely yes answer here is d 1 2 3 4 so cetaceans are basically they spend their whole lives in water it includes whales dolphins porpoise pinnipeds includes they use flippers for movement on land like seals sea lions walruses sirenians includes dugong which is sea cow and manatees and slow and passive mammals and marine have uh, have separate toes and polar bears and sea otters are considered marine mammals because they depend on the ocean for their food and habitat and question number 15 an aquatic ecosystem the organism found living in the bottom of water mass is known as answer is benthos so benthic and nectons which are swimmers and they range in size from insects to large mammals like blue whale and periphyton are the organism which remain attached to stems and the leaves of rooted plants or substance emerging from the bottom mud so this is very very important these concepts and we'll continue in the next lesson thank you hey guys what's up so we continue our course on environment and ecology and i'll try to make 1000 mcqs in this and by the time you're done with this course you don't need to read any book whatsoever so the best possible way to learn according to science is to learn in the question and answer format this is this is the way you fa- gra- grasp the fastest which of the following states is home to the most number of tigers in the country it is a very typical question which is asked because tiger is the national animal of india so answer here is karnataka so karnataka has the highest number of tigers in country and it is around 406 followed by 340 in uttarakhand and 308 in madhya pradesh and currently we have around 2300 tigers and it is an increase of 30% from the last count just remember that roughly we have 2.5000 tigers in india uh, consider the following characteristics of a bird century it is the oldest bird century in india since they are talking about oldest bird century everybody should know the answer it is located in the state of tamil nadu so it cannot be bharatpur bird century right gargnery teals glossy bees grey heron grey pelican open billed stork or some of the species of uh, 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 birds found here so answer here is basically it is the vedan thangal bird century it was established in 1936 it is the oldest water bird century in india it is located in the state of tamil nadu and it is the only option which is located in the state of tamil nadu rest all three are not even located there which of the following are ozone's precursor see ozone in stratosphere is good because it will save us from ultraviolet rays which is harmful can cause cancer but ozone in troposphere is bad it is a pollutant and it will kill you so it is a double edged sword so uh, here for the ozone precursors uh, nox carbon monoxide vocs they are called as ozone precursors so majority of the tropospheric ozone formation occurs when nitrogen oxides carbon monoxide and volatile organic compounds they react in the presence of sunlight so here answer is 1 to 4 and sulfur dioxide is not there consider the following statements about red algae they absorb red light to photosynthesize they lives in deep sea water answer here is b2 only red algae will absorb blue light right and they will reflect red light 
and it can penetrate into greater depths they are red because of the presence of the pigment phycoerythrin and this pigment reflects red light so any object which looks uh, let's say green so it will reflect green light that is why it looks green and so here it will reflect red light so that's why it will look red and because blue light penetrates water to a greater depth than light of a longer wavelength these pigments allow the red algae to photosynthesize and live at greater depths than most other algae consider the following type of forest hilltop forest cloud forest reed forest forest fringing river system which of the following are referred as riparian ecosystem so answer here is four so riparian areas are ecosystems that are occur along the water courses or water bodies so here the only one that fits the bill is forests fringing river systems and they are distinctly different from the surrounding lands because of the unique soil and vegetation characteristics that are strongly influenced by free or unbound water in the soil and they occupy the transitional areas between the terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem and some examples include flood plains stream banks lake shores etc select the correct statement from the options given below which describes bio leaching so here when we talk about bio leaching so answer here is microorganisms are used to extract metals from the low grade ores so here answer becomes a so here uh, bio leaching leaching is a phenomenon in which something is getting separated for example leaching of minerals happens when they go from the soil to the bottom so here it is the process of using bacteria to dissolve metals instead of chemical solutions and it has been used to dissolve metals such as nickel copper zinc cobalt gold lead arsenic and they works by using specific bacteria that can essentially eat the metal content out of core uh, consider the following characteristics of a national park it lies between the confluence of banas and chambal river okay the protected forest is also famous for their large banyan trees and enshrines a medieval fort it is one of the most uh, one of the project tiger reserves and consists mostly of deciduous forest answer here is ranthambore national park and uh, ranthambore national park is in savai madhopur district of rajasthan it lies between the confluence of banas and chambal river it has enshrines a medieval fort and it has tiger hyena sloth bear cheetal or some other rare species found here asiatic lions are found in which of the following so answer here is gir national park everybody knows about it so sasan gir national park located in gujarat is famous for its thriving population of the asiatic lion and lion is not found in in the other national parks here which of the following river is the largest river basin in india so in india is the question answer is a ganga so ganga basin is the largest river basin in india in terms of catchment area and it constitutes of 26% of the country's land mass and about 79% area of ganga basin is in india and it also extends to other countries okay like bangladesh etc and the basin covers 11 states uttarakhand up mp rajasthan haryana himachal chatisgarh jharkhand bihar west bengal and delhi and asia's largest inland salt water lagoon and world's largest breeding ground for flamingos herons uh, white bellied sea eagles etc is located in so answer here is chilika lake bird sanctuary it is in odisha and it is asia's largest inland salt water lagoon so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 61 to 70 of environment and ecology and uh, many of you have already watched this course and thousands of you have already enrolled so let's get started study of rearing honeybees is called as that is basically called as apiculture so there is no doubt about it and this is a very common question they ask horticulture is related to vegetables fruits etc basically not traditional agriculture and pisciculture is related to fishes okay so apiculture is the study of rearing honeybees horticulture is when you do not do traditional so you can do for ornamental plants flowers vegetables fruits that is called as horticulture pisciculture is basically study of rearing fishes pisces is a term which is used for fishes Question number 62 the use of diclofenac drug resulted in reduction of population of which one of the following birds so diclofenac bahuti is a very common drug which we use it is called as boilini and use it as a painkiller and uh, so vultures they can't process it their kidney fail because of this so answer is a vultures so use of the drug diclofenac and uh, used in the treatment of livestock has been linked to the collapse of vulture population throughout south asia and unlike ddt diclofenac does not accumulate in the tissues of livestock or birds but for vultures it is a poison okay question number 63 which of the following 
uh, animals is our example or keystone species so keystone species some if you remove them it create a chaos complete utter chaos in the ecosystem sea otters in pacific northwest yes this is absolutely correct elephants in sargenti plains correct monkeys in western ghats if you remove monkeys in western ghats nothing will happen answer is a one and two so keystone species is a plant or animal that plays a unique and crucial role in which the ecosystem functions for example you can have a fig plant ecosystem if you remove the fig plant then the entire ecosystem will collapse and without keystone species the ecosystem would be dramatically different or it may cease to exist altogether and monkeys in western ghats they are not an example of keystone species species with restricted geographical distribution over relatively small range they are called as basically they are called as endemic species so answer here is c so endemism is the ecological state of a species being unique to a defined geographic location such as an island nation country or other defined zone or habitat type an endangered species which has been categorized by the IUCN red list as likely to become extinct and threatened species are any species which are vulnerable to endangerment in the near future question number 65 which of the following bird is an extinct bird of mauritius island answer is dodo everybody must know about it so when human before humans went there in 15th century everything was fine but uh, once the human landed there they just ate it up completely destroyed it so dodo raphus cuculatus is an extinct flightless bird that was endemic to the island of mauritius east of madagascar in the indian ocean question number 66 consider the following characteristics of a national park it is located in the great nicobar island of india so obviously it can't be Bharatpur National Park, okay? It has to be Campbell Bay National Park because uh, Dudwa National Park is not located in Andaman. Uh, this national park is separated from Galathia National Park by a wide forest buffer zone. It is covered by tropical evergreen forest and mangroves. The answer is a Campbell Bay. So it is a geographical situation in the Great Nicobar Islands, the largest of the Nicobar Islands, and these Nicobar Islands are in the Eastern Indian Ocean. This is separated from the Galathia National Park by a 12 km wide forest buffer zone and this is covered by tropical evergreen forest mangroves and dudwa national park and bharatpur national park are not located in the andaman islands question number 67 amazon rainforest is known as since they produce so much oxygen so they can't be hard they can't be liver they are called as the lungs of the planet earth so amazon rainforest functions as a giant air machine that absorbs a large amount of carbon dioxide and produces huge amount of oxygen so that is why they are called as the lungs of the planet earth and we should avoid cutting them Question number 68, which of the following animals are reptiles? Snake, definitely us. Turtle is also a reptile, lizard, dinosaur. All these are examples of reptiles. Answer is D, 1, 2, 3, 4. Question number 69, now these questions are very typical. Dachigum wildlife centuries in Jammu and Kashmir, that is correct. Jim Corbett National Park is in Uttarakhand, that is also correct. Manas wildlife century is in Assam, so this is wrong. And Ranthambore National Park, it is just 5 hours away from my house in Jaipur. I have been there in 10th class, seen it inside out. So it is in Savai Madhava district. So Ranthambhur National Park is in Rajasthan. So answer is C1 and 2 only. And Ranthambhur is very famous for tigers by the way. Question number 70. When a keystone species is removed from a habitat, uh, the habitat is dramatically changed. All the other species are affected. Some species may disappear or even become extinct. All these are absolutely correct. Answer is D, all of the above. So a keystone species is an organism that helps define an entire ecosystem. And when that species is removed, the habitat dramatically changes some species are extinct also because of that can get extinct so thank you for watching this lesson